Mm-hmm. Hello, everyone. So welcome to I Am Inspiring Women. Today we have Sarah Oliver, artist, and I love artists are dear, near and dear to my heart, so I love that we have a fellow artist on here. Sarah, if you do me a favor and just kind of introduce yourself, tell us about you. Okay, well, um, I, I'm a creative. I've been creative my whole life and um, working with women. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've had businesses for all my working life. And most of that is I've worked with bus- uh, with women um, on their outside. So I always kind of think it, it's just awesome where I'm at now is because I feel like I'm working from the inside out with women. And in all my past business ventures and endeavors, I was always working from the outside in. <laughs> so anyway, but women are, are my um, joy. And um, I've been doing that for over 35 years. So. So what do you do for a living? You're an artist, but I mean, are you, you, you seems to me like you're more than just, I don't want to say just an artist because being an artist is not a just, but in addition to being an artist, what else do you do? Well, I think that the creative overflow, and that's really where I live out of is this creative well. And um, so I, Personally, I'm a creative person. I use creativity for my personal and spiritual growth, for my emotional balance and maturity, if you will. And um, in that process, um, the overflow has begun to reach other other women, particularly um, with some of my drawings and doodlings. Um, I, um, as the result of posting them on Facebook, you know, in my business page, uh, began getting a lot of requests. So I printed. Uh, 40 greeting cards a little over a year ago just to sample a little bit to touch others and to have some inspiration encouragement for you know women and their friends and their circles of women because I really feel like uh, my heart is to touch women because healed women heal families heal communities heal workplaces I mean that's my heart is that this create creative well sort of would touch others and so um, I'm a creative coach, and um, uh, like I will share with my clients, it's none of my business what my art does. Um, it's to create and release and activate creativity in the body, you know, right. and so that's that's the business I'm in. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. So yeah. is this something you chose? I mean, you said you, you used to work from the outside in, and you said you've always been creative, so how did you get into you know, doing art as, as a a means to help other women? Is it just something you sort of fell into or is it something you plan? Well, I, I feel like, um, this creative expression, this, and, and basically for the last five years, my creativity has looked different. I was never a painter, uh, or drawing. I mean, in high school, I took all those classes, and I think that's where I felt the best in school was in art, <laughs> in the art room. I'm just, uh, you know, just like my little quiet space and just, you know, let me go. And um, so I, I, um, gosh, yeah, I was tattooing, doing cosmetic tattooing for, for gosh, over 23 years, and did not know that that really had become my identity and that, um, you know, I've, and before that, I worked with women um, in aesthetics, and I, you know, I did a lot of training and that sort of thing. And so, you know, it's a very intimate atmosphere when we work with women. And uh, so I did hear a lot about their insides. And of course, you know, with tattooing, I could make a woman look younger or, you know, more happy, you know, if she had eyebrows that pointed down and like I shaped them up and gave her a new shape. I mean, she didn't look, you know, she looked her insides and outsides matched. She says, you know, everyone says I look mad, but I'm not mad. So, you know, so that was, that was really quite satisfying. And honestly, if you would have told me that, you know what, you're not going to do that anymore. I would have, I would have thought, who are you? You know, like, because, you know, I, I had my niche, you know, and I loved it and I loved helping women. Um, but what happened is I personally, um, Uh, I had some significant relationships, women in my life pass, and um, I began, I, 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 I feel like this creativity started welling up in me, and I've got a whole story about how I first drew or painted my first one, but, um, 
I believe that that's, that was used to heal me personally. And, and so as I began to uh, just do what I was led to do, so to speak, and I started seeing how it was helping me. And um, it, just, it just came. So what happened was I was, I was now st struggling because I was feeling really good connecting with this creative new aspiration and then I had this business so I was like torn I was like oh my gosh this is crazy my inside so I felt like you know like I one summer I mean when all this started going down I spent a lot of money to go hang out with my tribe you know and tattoo I thought oh maybe I'm just like you know because it's an isolating kind of business um I don't I didn't work in a tattoo parlor per se with lots of other artists, but I was in my own studio and, and, you know, working through the referrals of physicians and that sort of thing. But, um, so anyway, I, I said, yeah, I'll go work. I'll go do some classes, you know, and hang out with, you know, a handful of other uh, artists. And I'm sure I just need a shot in the arm, but literally I, I had had no desire to do what I was doing. And, um, and so, I was at one of those places and and so like most of us what what i did is i i came up with all the best ideas i had i tried them and nothing worked yeah. and when that's the case you know that's what i know today that was my surrendering process i had to use up all my best ideas yep i really did and then when i was laying out you know saying god i don't know what's going on uh I remember, and this is this this is, um, and I'll kind of wrap it up here because it it's you know it's just one story after another. But I I just popped. I was on the couch and I was just like I don't I don't know what's going on and I was sad and I was crying and I reached over, picked up my phone and I popped on Facebook and this woman comes on and she says, I mean she literally popped on live when I flipped. Facebook open and she said, I don't know who, need, who needs to hear this, but God told me that someone needs to hear this. So stop opening, trying to open doors. God's closing. So stop it. She goes, okay, that's all I got. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> and I was just like, what are the chances I would pop on right at that time? But you know, it's like, that's what I was doing. I felt like, you know, some twisted sense of if I don't do my best, God's going to think I'm not grateful kind of you know, skewed mindset. And I, it just occurred to me. So I just, I just said, Oh my gosh, forgive me, God, I forgot you were God. You know, I don't know what I'm doing, but you do. So I'm going to go to work every day and be as cheerful as possible, just the way it is, but you got to land this plane. And so that's, that's what I did. And I got instant relief. And it was like five weeks later when a man walked into the studio and I was with a client and he said, he wanted to speak with me. So I finished up and um, I asked him to come back before my next client came back. And he said, would you ever consider giving this studio up? And I was like, inside, I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, you're landing the plane. And it's just, and it, I mean, it's not my studio to give away. So I said, well, why don't you leave your name and number? You know, I was real cool. Um, but inside I was like, yes you know, something's happening and it's not because I'm trying it, you know? Um, and, but that's, that's the creative flow. You know, when we let go, it just like, it opens up possibility. And so anyway, the short story is six weeks later, um, I was done. And that's when I really just stepped into this and said, okay, have your way, you know, let me, let me do what you'd like to do. And so that's the, um, that's my mindset. And that's, that's where I'm at, you know, today. So <laughs> it's the, it's the, I, I tell my husband this all the time. It's the letting go and allowing the universe to do what it's meant to do. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we should hold on too tight and uh, yeah. kind of get in our own way. I know I'm, I'm famous for doing that. <laughs> so, so yeah. what kind of, initial challenges or limitations that you find that you had once you, you know, once you get by, you know, you got past that six weeks later, you're doing this. What other than letting go, because I know that that really is a big, it is a big deal. You've got to be okay with letting go and letting, you know, the world and the universe and God and do what they 
are here to do. You're just kind of like a following the flow. But yeah. what did you, what kind of challenges did you have that you had to work through? A lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know what? I would have never known they were there if I would have kept holding on. Mm -hmm. um, because they were things that needed to be healed in me. Um, and they were the very things that were holding me back. And so, you know, I think when we surrender, um, you know, it feels really good and the relief is there, but there's work, there's work to be done. Um, because, you know, when, when any experience I have with surrender is we're being called into something else and to be, to step forward and into that, I had to, I had to, you know, look at the ways that I was in, you know, like the self-defeating mindset and behaviors. And, um, I think a big part for me was, um, with my business, uh, which was extraordinary. I mean, I, it was a blessing from the get go was that it, it helped me to be self-supporting, um, individually. And yeah. I, I've been married for almost 37 years, but that mindset that I could take care of myself because of, uh, some old, you know, wounding from, from my younger years, I didn't realize it still had a hold on me that I was afraid to trust mm -hmm. uh, for resources outside of my own hard work. And so my, I didn't realize the level of striving that was in, in me. And so I came up against that and really um, was, was put in a position to, to really be taken care of in all ways by bringing nothing right really nothing financially and it just so happened that um you know again like you say the universe everything shifts to allow our healing and we don't have to we don't have to wait to set everything up for us to go okay now it's my time <laughs> you <know>? exactly <laughs> our job is just to surrender and let the universe do what it does which is embrace us and and and, and hold us and so that's that's the challenge the challenge has been my thinking about me that my thinking about uh my resources and that kind of thing and so i guess what that brought up for me was even more so is like this whole imposter sy syndrome you know like like well oh my gosh i have to do this people are going to think i'm a fake and i'm and i'm like and it just occurred to me after i said that to a friend oh well this is my lifestyle. So why would I be afraid of that? You know, this is what I coach others with and for, and me too, you know, <laughs> it's like, so this last couple of years, I guess the challenge, all of those challenges brought me to a new place where I really love and embrace process. And so the challenge today is an opportunity. It's not a setback. Correct. Yep. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So does your family support you then? I mean, you're, oh you're married. So does your husband support you? Are you taking on this endeavor? Yeah. I love that. That's crazy, crazy. isn't it? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> <That's what happens. laughs> it's like, it's awesome. I mean, and it, it's so bizarre because we both have our own businesses. And as soon as this happened for me, he was offered a salaried job in addition to his existing commission structure. So he got a, he got a raise <laughs> by letting go of his, his business. Yep. <laughs> and it's like, wow. So, it, you know, I studied a little bit about Jackson Pollock and, you know, his art, the, the way it took off after he got married. And it's like little life shifts create mm -hmm. different, you know, different, synchronicities like we tap into the wind you know our wind yep. you know and um so yeah and and he's he's just as delighted as i am i mean he was i mean he didn't think he would ever be able to support me this fully you know fantastic so it's been awesome for him too and um and our whole family our two adult children you know they have grown up with two 
two parents, each having their own businesses. And honestly, um, when I closed my practice after that six week, I gave a six week notice and I worked my butt off really to fit as many women in as I could. Um, I remember sitting on the couch with my husband and our daughter FaceTimed us. And so we're sitting there and this is my daughter who's, I mean, she'll be 26 in a couple of days. But she says, um, so dad, what's it gonna be like to have, um, what did she say? She said, uh, I, I can't remember her exact words, something like, what's it gonna be like to have a housewife? <laughs> and like we neither of us had even thought about all I mean it's like it it you know like you know uh, those were not her words but the idea is like you know right. so like basically having you home all the time yeah okay. and so it's like uh, we impact others in ways that you know and these you know our kids both of us have talked to about us about different aspects of this and they've been inspired themselves in, and, and in that's, the, that's the thing that I like most is that yeah by us doing what we are meant to do we inspire those around us to do what they're meant to do and, and that's actually the whole basis for these recordings is that you know our goal is to inspire other women to do what we're meant to do you know and it right. doesn't always doesn't always seem like it's mm -hmm. possible but if we work on it it is so Sarah, do you have, do you have written goals? Well, um, written goals, that's part of my process is, you know, I do a lot of questions. I'm, I'm big into self exploration. So daily, you know, I've got questions I ask myself and part of my, um, uh, my methods and processes, I actually started and I, I can't even take credit for this. I was, out in the garden meditating one morning and it's like I got this download for a four-part class mm -hmm. and it's like I just started taking notes and um, so uh, in the first cycle the first phase of the, the course is um, is what I call retreat mm -hmm. and it's it's my methods and processes for that particular thing for goal setting and for just self-exploration giving you giving tools to life tools mm -hmm. that have worked for me that I pass on. And so one of those exercises is, um, is about goals and priorities and how we have to look at them often, because especially when we go through accelerated growth, like myself, I've been doing it more often because this has been a big change for me. I mean, these are, and I, and I work with women who are not only young, but most of the women that started coming to me were in transition themselves because yep. they witnessed what was going on with me. Right. And even my clients, when I had given notice and I was working with them, I was telling them the stories yeah. and they were like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to retire in a, in a year. Oh my goodness. Yeah. My kids have all moved out of the house. You know, women, we have these, you know, transition times where, and I'm not saying men don't, but I'm not a man and I don't know what it's like to be a man. But um, with, with me, it's like, I know that there's a lot of different transitions and identity is all wrapped up in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if we don't pay attention and ask ourselves these questions, we're going to be working off of a way old grid, like decades of unchecked beliefs and opinions. Yep. You know? Exactly. And, exactly. Yeah. And I, I completely agree. We've, we've got to, we've changed a lot as women. We've grown a lot in, in the past few decades since, you know, our, our grandmothers and our mothers, but we still have a long way to go. Yeah. And we have to help the next generation. We've got to help each other to be able to move through those, as you said, those transitions and, you know, allow for it to be okay. Mm -hmm you know, whatever it is that you're doing, it's okay. Yeah. You're good. Right. You know, it, it would be the judgment, the, the self loathing, the self judgment and the self deprecation, all that stuff. It, we don't need it. And it's completely unnecessary if we've got it, you know, we've got each other's back, but that's, that's mm -hmm. a big, a biggie if we've got each other's back. So right. um, yeah, I, I don't know what's right for anyone else. No, but no. When, but I, when I do what's right for me, yep. It is right for everyone else. It, evidently, that's been my experience so far. And, and so 
I use creativity as and color specifically yep. as a way to connect with my insides. And that's what I like to share are those processes that are visual or creative that help women to connect with their insides because, you know, left to my own devices, I wouldn't know what I'm, what I am. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you know? I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so for, for growth, and for self-development, what is it that you do specifically? Uh, you, art is a, a big way for you to, to come to an idea of who you are. Um, do you read? Do you watch videos? Um, do you talk to other women? What, what is it that you do in addition to that? Sure. Well, I, I, yeah, I love to read. I'm out in the garden. That's part of my letting go. And it seems like nature, you know, nature has so much to teach us. And so inevitably, I, I, I really connect with myself in nature. Um, I think it's important for us to have a safe, safe, sacred space. Yep. And so I'm really big on that, helping women to establish that safe place um, and a loving atmosphere. And it doesn't take a lot of space to do that. And sometimes what happens is they practice it, they realize it's really inside of themselves. So We've always got it, no matter where we are or how much time we have, how noisy it is or whatever the circumstances, we can go within like that. So that's really huge for me. And then I feel like I, I, do, um, I do stay in touch with, um, you know, other women who are running like this, you know, who, who have that same uh, desire and willingness to, you know, to continue because that's that's the key i mean we don't know where we're going we know things are changing and unless i unless i've committed to changing and to showing up and i think the other part of it too is that a lot of times my clients help me know which way to go and what's next you know and because i that's the beauty of this thing is just like the synchronicity of happenstances you know when we're put together with others it's for a reason we didn't we didn't arrange this we didn't like research for each other it came yeah. and these organic happenings are very powerful and and so if we listen and we're paying attention we we find out what's next i agree i completely yeah. agree and I, I i appreciate kendall for for connecting the two of us because she knows what my goals are we've talked about those and and obviously we're very much in tune with each other with mm -hmm. what you have planned what i have planned so i i love that she's connected us and i appreciate mm -hmm. that so much. Yeah. So are you are you a planner or are you a go with the flow kind of girl i i think i i think i do a little bit of both because the my processes work with left brain and right brain mm -hmm. and i think for balance and growth um, and strength, I think we need to be aware of both of those. So um, I, I plan and then I let go. Good. Um, because I found that when I try and bring about a certain result, it's very painful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I spent most of my life doing that. So what the you know, has in store for us is a heck of a lot better. We just have to be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like when I decided, okay, I'm just going to be happy and go to work. And not try and make myself better or change anything. And I'll just trust that you're going to do what you're going to do. You yeah. know? And right. it worked out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what do you like to do for fun? Now, art for me is fun. So mm -hmm. gardening, art, what else do you like to do for fun? Um, well, um, family. You know, spending time with family. Um, and that's the season I'm in right now. I, I really, over the last couple of years, uh, discovered um, that I had a really a great sense of loss of that and um, started owning, you know, like my part in the lack of connection. Mm -hmm. um, my family, um, my immediate family, you know, really, you know, were good there and, and trickle out. But, you know, it's like, <clears throat> with those with those two relationships passing uh within the last couple of years those two women they really impacted me and and um you know until we don't have something we don't know what we have the whole the whole of it i mean we think we have a good idea of it 
but there's always more. And so there were things when I, when I look back that I, you know, it's like I had regret and, and that's real. Regret is real. And I, and I really, I, I asked myself, well, what do you want to do with your regret? And so regret could, could, t I could really go in and let self pity take over and say, Oh, you know, I ruined it. There's, you know, whatever, you know, and let that take me down that road. But the other word that came to me with regret was let re regret be wisdom. Uh, yeah. Let it, let it take me and say, wow, you know, like what, how could I do that differently? And I didn't know that I had that need inside of me or that yearning. And so how can I get that met in a healthy way? And, you know, how can I create something different or more? And I've really let that help me a lot. So um, just since I've been aware of this loss of family, uh, which has been a little over a year, I have reconnected with like 20 family members. <laughs> Perfect. And again, it's not because I made a list and made a plan or anything like that. Life just started happening. Like a friend got married and took me into an area of Florida that I have several relatives that I haven't seen in a long time, you know, and it's just like, it just, I haven't really had to go out of my way, so to speak. You know, I, I did, I, I used time differently. Mm -hmm. You know, I, because it was important, but, um, that's been a lot of my fun lately. And just, just really being aware of how fun it is to let, you know, this creative universe, this loving creator, you know, show me really what the plan is for me. You know, that's fun. Yeah. Instead of me sitting home trying to figure life out, you know, and making it hard on myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. So, do you have other women who inspire you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think first and foremost the women I work with. Uh, I have the privilege and honor of, you know, knowing them intimately and collectively in a group. I've had the opportunity to step up and uh, facilitate some retreats uh, for women, and that you know, that's just been such a blessing and talk about being inspired, you know, seeing things come together and, um, you know, hearing women's stories inspires me, you know, that's, that's my, my love language is quality time. And so hearing your stories are like, it's just, it is, it's very inspiring. My kids inspire me, you know, by, by their, choices and the way they're making decisions and I'm thinking oh my gosh you know like either a you're paying attention <laughs> or b like look how courageous you are maybe I could do that too I don't know <laughs> I, yeah it, I, I love I love that that that's fantastic I, I I, I'm the same. My quality, quality time is very important to me. So I completely understand what you mean. I love hearing, like hearing you tell me your story. I, I want to know more. I, yeah. I, you know, this, this obviously is not going to be long enough, but I want to <laughs> know. So we're going to, we're going to do some more videos, but I, I love that you're telling me that. So, all right, I've got a couple extras here for you. Okay. What kind of a legacy would you like to leave? Um, the legacy that I, I, I really, and I've thought about this, um, is like, because when you get to the other side of your, you know, the, the second half of your life, like I have, <clears throat> you know, that, that kind of questioning comes up and just the awareness that I'm not going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. And, um, what can I do today? That's going to have life, you know, so much life on it that, like the women that I've lost recently, they continue to be with me in my, I mean, because of their example, I, I do what I think they would do or what I saw them doing and it works for me. So I, I think my legacy is just to work with women, again, healed women, heal families. And that's my heart. There's a lot of brokenness in families for a lot of different reasons. And I don't have to get into each of the different reasons. I think all, you know, and that's the thing. It's not, 
it's, it's just the principles I can pass on really, the precepts, skills, uh, tools that, um, that work for, for everything in, in any part of our life. Um, if I could just leave some of that, I guess that's my legacy. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's mm -hmm. perfect. So yeah. uh, what's your favorite book? Ooh, that's a hard one. Oh my gosh. I just have, I've got like six books I've got to get to, I'm reading three and I've got six more. So I am a reader. I love that. Um, I'll tell you, I, I mean, I go back to the Bible probably the most of anything because um, as I've gotten older, like the Bible always kind of scared me because I, I was like, I could never get through like Genesis with all those names, you know? And it's like, I said to a friend, gosh, over 10 years ago, I'm like, no, I just can't do that. Like, I mean, I've done a lot of little Bible studies, but front to back, I still haven't done that. But, um, I, I just have so many stories that go back to the Bible. And, you know, so I, I think that has to do with, too, with just, you know, you, you talk about legacy, like all those that have gone before us. And for me, it's like, those are mamas and papas. Those are, you know, prophets. And I believe that we have prophets in today's time. And it's like, um, for me, sometimes to discern some of the people in today, I, I use that as a template. Um, and, and so, yeah, I do that. I have, sometime we'll have to do my 822 story. Um, right. so, uh, but I tend to, I tend to go back to that quite a bit, the, the Bible, but, um, books on like, I'm into like creative and psychology, you know, like all of that it really just lights me up, you know, awesome. powerful stuff. What would you, what would you like other women? girls, young ladies out there to know? Oh, that you are beautiful. You are wired with everything you're always ever going to need. And life is about like just tapping into that and, and believing in divine order and divine timing. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's really my message for younger girls. You know, if I could have go back and assure myself as a younger woman, that's what I would say to her. Um, you know, just, you know, you, you are, you're enough, you're perfect. And I can't wait to see you blossom, you know, and you come into your own and it's, it, it's beautiful. And I, I, I can say that about myself right now too, you know, like, and you, it's like, we are beautiful. We are enough. And I can't wait to see where we're headed and how we're going to blossom and bloom. You know, it's just perfect. So it's good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. What is one question that I didn't ask you that I should have? Hmm. One question. I, I don't know. I, I guess I don't really... have things that I feel like people need to know about me. I think if they need to know about it, they'll ask me. I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. Can't think of one right now. Okay. Well, you, if you, you did think good. You did great. <laughs> and you as well. Thank you so much, Sarah, for, for doing this with me. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, the goal is to, you know, continue on some, some other videos, uh, mm -hmm. like to be able to have you share your artwork, mm -hmm. do all that kind of stuff. So thank you again for, for mm -hmm. doing this and, uh, we'll talk to you again in a little bit. Thank you very much. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.